Hello everybody and welcome to the Art Stand. Manchester United have won and back with Ben Foster. How are you doing, Ben? I'm good as gold, mate, you? I'm in a good mood, yeah. After last week, it's great to be back. And I tell you what's back. Now, I very rarely do this and I know I'm going to get clipped. I believe Manchester United are back if they build on yesterday, bring Varane into that team, Casemiro, Man United are going to have a good season. I thought it was absolutely the first glimpse, and we spoke about this a couple of weeks ago, you said it's going to take 18 months for him to get to play like that. That's the closest we've been, and there's a lot of work to do for Ten Hag. 70% possession, lots of shots on goal, lots of people said Everton played badly. I think that's disrespectful. I think United just nullified them and played very well. Stats, I agree with you. The stats back all that up, all right? I've seen all your pictures and all your tweets and all that kind of Is stuff. that one of me next to the I did, that? exactly that. I saw <laughs> that. And the stats are fantastic. Um, still watching the game, though. I still oh, no, it's not a but. no 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 it, a kind of a but yeah I still think in comparison to um, you probably watched the Man uh, sorry the uh, the Arsenal Liverpool game yeah, yeah I think in comparison still they're a way off it they oh, are yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's the bit that's the worry for me um, I, uh, again I, I worry about them being able to keep repeating the, these kind of performances away at Everton to be fair do you know what actually away at Everton is a tough place to go with it yeah, I, I, I was really really happy with that and I said before the game that if they come out of that game with a result yeah. it needs to be respected especially after the derby Everton 7 points from 9 but no, I, th I, th I just think that if you bring Varane in Casemiro made such a difference there's a spine to that team with De Gea there as well I think the, the inconsistent... I agree with you, the miles off Man City yeah. and Arsenal, but I'm thinking third, fourth, if they keep that team together, that's United sort of aim now under Ten Hag for the next year or so until next summer. Well, um, funnily enough, Casemiro starts. Yeah, yeah, yeah Casemiro yeah, yeah. starts, and that's the difference. You see how much goes through him. It's a ridiculous. So, so now when, when anybody gets the, the ball, whether, whether it's a defender, a winger, whatever, and they get their head up, Casemiro is available. Casemiro, that's the beauty of Casemiro. He makes himself available. And he's got this aura about him where he knows he wants the ball, but also that everybody around him knows that he wants the ball. So the second goal, for example, he nicks the ball off of Wobi. His first thought, and I know, I think whoever the commentator was, not I think it was, I think it was actually Rio Ferdinand, and he said, look at this, this is the beauty of this goal. As soon as he's nicked the ball, the ball's in front of him there. He has just got his head up and he's, that's it. The first thought, boom, get that ball into Ronaldo's feet and um, the rest is history. Fantastic finish by Ronaldo, by the way. I think the contrast, and we spoke about it a couple of weeks ago, the contrast between Casemiro and McTominay is, I wouldn't even have a debate with anybody about this. It's, yeah. it's night and day. You've got a player there who literally will say to everybody else, just move forward a little bit. I'll run this. I'll protect the back four. Yep. And he was a bit rusty at times, but when, I think I said it on the match reaction, we were talking about it before, McTominay averages about 30 passes a game. Yeah. Casemiro did 69 yesterday. Exactly. That's the difference between, well, you know, you've played the game. Is that why United's possession away to Leicester and Southampton has gone from 50 to 70 yesterday? Exactly that. Because you've got somebody who wants the ball. It's not even just wants the ball as well, but the opposition see who's got the ball. Mm. So when the opposition see that Casemiro's got the ball, I know <laughs> it's funny enough, it's going to kind of contradict what I'm saying, but... When the opposition see Casemiro's got the ball, they, they kind of almost stand off him because mm. they know he's got that quality, but then he loses the ball for the goal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, which, you know, like I say, contradicts, but that's what it does. It gets into the opposition's head. They see him on the ball and they know they have to just drop. They have to drop because he's got that quality to pick those passes out. But again, we, we spoke about this when he, when he first signed about, what, six weeks ago. And the fact that McTominay was starting, yeah, yeah. that's the bit for me that, it's great that he's, he's keeping faith with a youngster like that. That's fantastic. But it's Casemiro. Do you know what I mean? It's Casemiro. He lifts everything. You've got to put him in. And we had a lot of people yesterday saying, because uh, I'd done a tweet a few weeks ago where I said it was very clear that this was not a Ten Hag signing because um, Ericsson, Anthony, straight into the team, yeah. Martinez. And you got some United fans yesterday saying that, well, that, that puts that to bed. He's clearly been waiting to put him in the team. What Waiting to get demolished at Man City. <laughs> waiting to go to Southampton and Leicester and play 50% possession. I, I actually think, I don't know what you think on Casemiro, I actually think he was probably, by his high standards, that was probably quite an average game for him. But for United fans to see the impact yeah. he had on the team, even on an average day, he's got levels to go through. And I felt yesterday he did give the ball a lot away because he is rusty. Yeah. And that rust should be gone by now. He should have been in the team for me earlier. I, I don't want to go on about it because we won and we won without him. But yeah, I think he's still got 
and the World Cup's coming up in a month. Yeah. He might not be at his best until that World Cup starts now. A little extended run in the team will do him the world of good, honestly. Yeah. But if you, could, if you could fill Man United with players of that calibre, that's where you've got to go to. But the problem is Liverpool, not Liverpool, probably have miles off it, to be honest with yeah. you, at the minute. Um, but Arsenal, Man City especially, even Chelsea to an extent, they've got that calibre of players where they've got probably half a dozen in their team. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Man United at the minute kind of... Worry me that they've only got two or three. Yeah. Um, the probably the players at the minute that you'd look at that might be on that sort of level. Um, Ericsson, who I thought was decent yesterday. Um, Casemiro, David de Gea, uh, Martinez, Varane. Um, but I think they're going to need a few more still, a few more. And if you can build your team around big name players that have got this aura about them, that's where you've got to go. But the thing is, Man City have got eleven of them every single week. They've got eleven of them. I yeah. I mean, I I just think if. I, I mean, look, it's dangerous to say it, but I just think if you can get that team out yesterday, bring Varane into it for you know a good proportion yeah. of the season, that's where United, when I say United are back, I think that's when United back for me is a team that's showing progression yeah. with a vision. And I think yesterday we saw that for the first time this season. And I think that third or fourth is achievable. That's 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 all that's achievable. It's hundred percent. But that's achievable. the aim, that, and that that's for me. United a very very good season this year, compared yeah. from where they are last year. I completely agree that Man City, Arsenal, and that lot are are the problem. But also, as you mentioned, the consistency. And one thing that does worry me, and you said it there, Ericsson, Casemiro, Bruno. You lose one of those players. Yeah. And we saw Martial hobbling off yesterday. Exactly. You're back relying on Ronaldo again. Yeah. yeah. Sancho's out of form. You know, you lose Rashford around. Delo's the only right back we've got. There's a vulnerability to that, you know. What, what do you think of Anthony, though? Because <laughs> for me, even yesterday, I thought he was decent, mm. not brilliant, no. but he can score a goal. I think it's very similar to Rashford because we. I was going to ask you about Sancho and how he gets back into that mm. team because a few people echo what you said that Anthony was quiet, but I thought Rashford was quiet. Yeah, he was, and yet yeah. Rashford should have scored. Yeah. Anthony did. I think he's the first player to score three goals in, in his first, first three Premier League games. Yeah. Um, so which silences all the £80 million stuff. But ultimately, his overall game has been quite quiet. But yeah. Yeah, he did, and you know it yourself, you go to Everton, you're not going to be a winger that's going to take on that fullback ten times. You're going to have to graft. You, I mean, I said it before the game. You go to Everton, if you want to win that game, you're going to have to graft. It was chucking it down with rain as well. It's a, it's a wet, cold night. I, was, I, was, I, thought, I, thought he shift, I thought he put a shift in. The same, I was the same as you lot, though, but I guarantee you, this, the last five, ten minutes, I'm thinking... This is, they're going to score here. Yeah. They, they are going to score here. Man United is still have that soft underbelly. Mm. You do you know what I mean? You can feel it a little bit. That soft underbelly where you're thinking, well, they're just going to keep putting the ball in the box and they're going to score. It's inevitable. David well, they Hay, fought really hard, didn't they? Uh, so Delo again, fisting. Um, exactly that. That kind of stuff. The wrong word, but you yeah. know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's going like that. Um, and they were fighting for each other. I mean, that De Gea, you, you wanted to talk about De Gea yeah. and the goal and the saves. I thought, I thought De Gea was brilliant yesterday. I did. Um, like we, we spoke about before the show, sort of on the edge of his box, sweeping up, clearing up, kind of vocal. It's really clear that yeah. that's coming into his game now. Exactly, yeah. He's not, he's not going to be that goalie who's going to be able to pick out the world-class passes, but everybody can sweep up a bit. And do you know what I mean? If Man United are going to push up like they are, then he's going to have to push up with them as well. If Ten Hag had come into Man United and you were the number one, and you know you, you've got that. You know, some fans are saying it's time for him to move on. He's not that sort of keeper. And then Ten Hag says to you, Ben, right? I'm giving you this year. You know, you've got to really improve your game. Can you go from what we saw with De Gea yesterday, where he's sprinting 20 meters out of his comfort zone yeah. to boot the ball? Can can you could you do that? Can you just change? Yeah, can you and, adapt and let's like pretend that? that you're you know you're 31 like David De Gea yeah. again. Can you do that? Can you get that? Um, into your game because basically it's 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 out of your comfort zone, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, some some goalies are built with that. Some goalies have it in them, and it's just so natural. It's like it's it's kind of they haven't got this fear element in their brain. They don't care about the consequences, so they come running out and they do not care. They know what's going to happen. Um, I think the main thing is that everybody knows that he's going to play that way, though. So, yeah. like I say, if Man United are pushing up, you, he has to be up behind them. He does, but talking as well you have to be talking even if it's you just chatting absolute rubbish defenders need to know without turning their head where you are that's the beauty of it so if he can bring that into his game which he did yesterday absolutely fantastic but there are goalies that would do that absolutely naturally yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but I think it's not the hardest skill in the world to learn no, it really I, isn't and I you know I think back like I think if you were there or De Gea was there I think you both got it in you to do it. Yeah. If you want to yeah. do it, it's easily learned. You can, learn. You can learn that. The, the playing out from the back is something that 
I think um, I think is a lot more difficult to, yeah, he to tends learn. To take a touch, whereas Edison will pass it first time. And people say, "Why is he always taking a touch?" And I'm like, "Do you want him to hit it first time and yeah. lose it? He's making sure he makes." The just pass. look at the body language as well. You can tell you can tell a goalie that's very comfortable with the ball at the feet just from their body language. As soon as the ball gets played back to them, you pass it back to Edison. He looks like he's an outfield player. He looks like he doesn't care that there's a player there. <laughs> like he, he, that's, he's a joke, honestly. But that. And that, in, in turn, gets in the opposition's head. So they think, well, there's no point in shutting it down because he's just going to take a touch and make me look a dickhead. I'm out of position. They've got a man extra then. Do you know what I mean? He'll play it out. David De Gea gets the ball, and it's almost sometimes he, he's like, I don't really want this. I just want to give it to my fullback and get rid, and that's it. He did well yesterday, though, because it was chucking it down with rain, yeah. and uh, Everton did try and pressure him. Um, there was um, a couple of times when he came sprinting out of the goal and, like, you know... Oh, that's what he's got to do if he wants to stay yeah, in United. For sure, he's yeah. got to do it because Ten Hag will have an eye, eye on what he wants. Well, he wants a new contract as well, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he was yeah. happy to. Uh, he was happy to. I would want a new contract if I'm in three hundred grand a week as well. Um, yeah, I do. I do. I think he will get one just because. Just because, if you want to go and replace him with one of the good to go goalkeepers, it's seventy million now. Do you know what I mean? If you're going to go and get somebody like an Oblak or somebody of Edison Allison's ilk, it's seventy million pounds, and that's that's the difference. You either Keep paying David De Gea 300 grand a week or you go and spend 70 mil. Yeah, and well, nobody wants to spend 70 mil on a goalie. Honestly, they don't. That, the goalie's like the last resort. Like, get the arrest sorted first and then we'll sort the goalie out. So if somebody's already there and he's good to go and he's proven, they'll just give him a new contract. What do you think? Do you think David De Gea should get a new goal, uh, new thing? I mean, the, the one thing is that, I don't know whether you remember Mark Bosnich. Yep. He literally just couldn't kick the ball. That's, that's <laughs> never going to happen. Uh, what did you think about uh, Jane Sancho uh, not being in the team? Do you think there's a way back for him now? Um, yeah, I think, obviously, Martial going off. Um, it kind of, like I said, Martial, for me, I know I, people know what he's about. People know that he gets injuries all the time and he's, gonna, he's not going to be able to play that amount of games. Whether Martial is the main man up top or not, I'm still not fully convinced by all that kind of stuff. But um, I think Rashford is just so... Um, he's good one week and then he's OK and then he's off it. and So I think it will just constantly rotate. I really do. Even, but even from now until the end of the season, they'll all get a bit of a sniff. They'll all get a bit of a chance. Anthony looks like the sort of player again who, if he doesn't go on a scoring run like he is, his all-round game at the minute doesn't look like it's absolutely fantastic so then that's where Jade and Sancho can get back in as well so for me it's just probably it's probably just about getting him on the bench for a few weeks it's almost like a rocket up your ass you know this is the work the rate that we need from you, you re we need this intensity I think he'll see that and he'll come back better for it well look at Luke Shaw yesterday um, a couple of weeks ago I never would have thought he was yeah. going to get back in the team apart from the conversations we've had that as a professional footballer Harry Maguire's been on holiday apparently for a week to yeah. clear his head that opportunity will come. It's come for Lindelof because Maguire's injured. It's come for Shaw because Malasia is not playing well. It's come for Rashford because Sanchez not playing well. You look at Luke Shaw yesterday. You just got to take the chance. Haven't you? Yeah. you can't come in and be average. You've no got to come in and grab the chance. Yeah. And then suddenly, it's really interesting. I think because United fans are really fed up and toxic about players, and, and I mean toxic in a positive way. They deserve that toxicity. Yeah, yeah. it's a very strong word. But Luke Shaw yesterday, I saw it on social media, and people are going, you know, what fair play. You will always, as a United player, or any player, I suppose, you will always get the credit from the fans, no matter how much they've slagged you off. Yeah. If you come back in and do well and do it in the right way, there's always a way back in, and that's the same for Sancho, Rashford and everyone. It, it, Luke Shaw was fantastic. I think the the reason why a, lot, why a lot of these players get the flack is because of the, the money that they're earning, though. It does. It always boils back down that, to that for me. So... The fact that we're talking about somebody like Luke Shaw, who was one of England's best players in the Euros a couple of years ago, um, you know, he's he's earning crazy amounts of money, and the fact that he's played a Premier League game away at Everton and went fair play. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Players like this should be it should be a given that they yeah, should be yeah. able to come in and just do their job. Do you know what I mean? And don't get me wrong, he was he was absolutely brilliant yesterday. But that intensity that he showed yesterday, the tracking back, the working back, the the will to really want to win. He needs to do that all the time. And there's so many players in that team that just don't do it all the time. And that's going to be the thing moving forward, the consistency. You mentioned it at the start. Um, terrible against Man City. We'd won four Premier League games before that. You go to Everton and win. Yeah. Newcastle next. I think Tottenham and Chelsea are the other way around, maybe. That's the next four games. All those teams are in different... Even Everton were in good form. Yeah. Newcastle are in good form. For sure. Spurs, good at grinding out results. Chelsea getting better under Potter. Do you see another United... Not, I mean, look, anyone you could lose any of those games. Yeah. But do you think United fans should be concerned about another pounding? Do you think that is still a problem that's going to continue for United, or do you feel that maybe there were signs yesterday that that might not happen again? 
Yeah, the <laughs> I honestly can't help you. Yeah. I really can't help you because I've sat, I've sat here with you after some match weeks and said, you know what? It was so good how they ground that result out. Mm. They showed real grit and determination and nous and the will to get over the line. It was fantastic. And then the next week they go and get pumped four 0 and they show absolutely zero of that. So they just this this is the, this is the thing about it that frustrates Man United fans. That frustrates everybody. You go, how can you go from one extreme to the other? It's 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 outrageous. But um. All, all we can do is is look at the game that they had yesterday, and, and I just think it showed a lot of a lot of grit and a lot of determination to get over the line. Away at Everton, you do not understand how difficult that place is to go and get a game, especially get a win. Sorry, especially with the last few minutes and like say the rain smashing down, they're putting balls into the box right, left, and centre. It's so easy to to melt and to fold and to concede a last minute equaliser. Yeah, and I think the impressive thing for me is that I think if I, we were talking just before we went uh, did the video is that. If I felt with the Rashford goal being disallowed, they would get that late goal. Yeah, had that inevitability. What do you think of the Rashford goal disallowed goal? By the way, hundred percent a goal. It's a shambles, it's isn't it? Absolutely. This, this 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 handball VAR refereeing. Oh my! It's just a shambles, mate. I, every, all of it is just completely subjective. Yeah, it's all completely whether the referee thinks it at that moment in time or the guy on VAR thinks it that. That, that was in time. VAR. I that was VAR. I was going three yeah. one home and died game over. I done my tweet. You know, I'm well advanced when I'm doing my watch along. If I've already done the tweet about the goal. Do you think right the fact that it's on telly and they know it's on BT and they've got a big Massive captive audience watching this. Do you think that plays into the guy on VAR's mind a little bit? Do you, do you think he's thinking we can get the last ten minutes of the game here and it's a nail biter and it keeps people watching? If it goes to three one, people turn their telly off. They don't want to watch it anymore. You know, I, oh, I always judge it. I always try and take the red tinted glasses off and go to the other fans. Yeah. And think and I think if I'm an Everton fan, that's three one. Yeah. I'm oh. never looking at that and going, oh, that, we'll have that for a handball. You might, you might think you might. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. If I'm, if I'm Jordan Pickford and I've just conceded that goal, I am thinking that's a goal. Yeah. There's no way I'm thinking, oh, it possibly brushed his hand. That's not even a thing. It was a goal. It was a good goal. It's as simple as that. But the weekend was littered with stuff well, like that, that. It's always, I'm going to say that, it's always, it seems to me, that we've got a brilliant weekend of football. I think Gary Lennick had tweeted it this morning. But then I think, well, it's been ruined, Gary, because yeah. it has been a brilliant weekend of football with some really good results. But... There was like, there's always the massive contradiction. You get the Rashford one, and then you yeah. get Antonio two hours before doing it worse, and it's given. It's VAR, and, Mark. We need yeah. to get rid of VAR. I've told yeah. you this forever. We do not need it. I played in the championship without it, and it's fantastic. You don't even worry about this stuff. If the referee makes a mistake, cool, I'll take that, yeah? But when you're in the Premier League, you're constantly waiting. You're constantly, they're looking for something. They're looking for, I'm saying, that's ruining football. Yeah, I it's think, ruining I think football. That yesterday was prime example of going to look for something yeah. and, and, and ultimately we're there to entertain and part of it, part of football's goals. You should always, I think, err, err on the side of goals. Exactly, yeah. Let, where are you going to err on the side of United this week? Are we, are we you know, what, what, what are you thinking? I mean, we've had nine games now. We're starting to get a little bit of consistency. What are you thinking about uh, United's top four hopes? I said last week, fifth or sixth. This week, I, I think we're back in the race for top four. Who they got the weekend? Newcastle next week. Um, obviously, cut that out, yeah. Um, um, Newcastle's a tough game, you know. Mm. Newcastle's a really, really tough game. It's like they've all of a sudden found a way to start playing football. Um, mate, it's again... All United games are tough for the next few weeks. For sure West they are. Ham, I think Villa will probably have a new manager by the time. We, we said this last week. They're, 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 they're all tough matches. Newcastle's a really tough one. and um, It's kind of each game you get to see different qualities of Man United and you'll get to see what they're really made of. That's going to be the bit. And <clears throat> I can't help you. I really can't help you. Yeah, I think you'll do the same though. I, I guarantee just change you. every week. I think that's yeah. But I, I guarantee you'll say I couldn't tell you what I think of that game. If you were to go right, this is how it's going to go against Newcastle. Yeah, no, I, I, I will. I would say I you are just making it to anybody out there. If they're trying to predict the, the Newcastle game of how the game's going to go, the score, like all that kind of, I'll go. No, you're making that up because there's no way you can predict that. It's, it's not that easy. See, I'm, I'm moving away from that now. I'm becoming like, I think we'll win. I Do think you? we'll beat Newcastle because I think if you, if you build on that team and Varane will be back, I just think that if you go to the Brentford game, it was a different back four. It was a different team with McTominay, Maguire, Luke Shaw. The Man City game was our best team, yeah. but we just bottled it. I don't think any team's going to do what Man City did to us and I think we'll always be in the game and we won't 1-0 down yesterday. I'm, I'm hopeful that yesterday is a, is, a, is a step in the right direction and I think we'll... We'll build on that for the next few weeks. All right, can we clip this up then? Where oh, we will, we will. I, 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 I want Man United to win. I really, really do. But I think I am coming from my head, 
which is a bit more sensible, and you are coming from your heart and you're saying, no, we're going to win. So um, we'll see how it goes. But I, honestly, I just think it's, it's just so hard to predict at the minute. We'll see. We'll see. I'm saying I think this is the start of something for United. I've, I've sensed something. I'm going to put it out there. You know, yesterday, I wore my Ronaldo uh, hoodie and I knew he wasn't going to pick and he scored. And I'm watching Liverpool and I went, Nunez looks good. He'll score. I saw and people it, laughing. mate. I saw so it. This is three. This Literally is three. a minute later, he scored. Yeah. Um, quickly talk about Ronaldo there, by the way. 700. Yeah. 700 yeah, club goals. Yeah, just, I mean, what's your thoughts on that? And it, you've trained with the guy. Well, the... the um, per- I'll tell you what, coffee, I'll give you a bit of context. Thursday, I'm doing the watch along Thursday, Europa League. He misses all those chances. United fans, I don't yeah. mind rivals. United fans, get out of my club, this, that and the other. So when he scored yesterday, I, I didn't bite on it on Thursday. I just found the disrespect, a disgrace. You never write this player off. Never. And that goal, you used pace, finish... <laughs> There's you, nothing. You there's back. no different from last year. That's a 38 year old, 39. What is he? 38, 39. 38 now, yeah. He's 38 year old player that is, and he is still out sprinting. Was it Connor Cody? I think it was I think Connor Cody. 37, 38 this year. He's out, either way. It's, either way, he's out sprinting Connor Cody, right? Who, yeah, for sure, he's not going to be the the fastest player in the world, but still, he's England's out goalkeeper. He's out sprinting him with the ball as well. Yeah, he's got to keep the ball under control. So he's out sprinting Connor Cody, and on his left foot, and he's just drilled it. That's, that's Cristiano Ronaldo. Come on, if you if you've got him, even if you've got him sat on the bench. And he's coming on for 40 minutes, half an hour every game. It's it's a world class asset to have. You can't write him off, and I think people who do, I just think nah, there's a rule in yeah. football: never write Ronaldo off. No chance. And uh, it was brilliant. Thanks for coming on, Ben. Pleasure, Lots to mate. discuss there. Get your comments in below. Thanks for watching.